the admissions committee of our School of Medicine and began the work of explicitly going out to seek out highly qualified underrepresented minority students uh, to come and uh, join us at our school. And within a few short years, the numbers expanded dramatically. So he began to give back, to reach back and to help others uh, very early on in his career. And that's something that I've admired very much about you, Levi, over, over the years. My job this evening is very simple. I'm here to welcome you. I serve as the president of the Johns Hopkins Hospital and Health System, but one of my other roles is that I'm the executive vice president of Johns Hopkins Medicine, which is the formal alliance between our health system and the School of Medicine. So one of the things I do is to make sure that uh, as between the school and the health system, things uh, work uh, you know, uh, as well as they can. And uh, that's part of what I, what I do. Uh, we have been about the business of trying to figure out how to work hard at the goal of making uh, our workforce and the leadership of our workforce, as well as the student body and trainees, resemble more closely those whom we are serving as patients. Uh, and so the work that Levi began back in the late 1970s really helped us to get a jump start toward that end. About a decade ago, then Dean Edward Miller of the School of Medicine held a dean's retreat. Uh, and among other things coming out of that dean's retreat was a definitive commitment to add the very notion, the very simple notion of diversity and inclusion as an integral part of our values statement. In the most recent cycle of the development of our five-year strategic plan, we have very explicit strategic priorities, one of them in the area of people, uh, and our, our fundamental goal with respect to the strategic priority that deals with people is to be able to attract, to recruit, and retain uh, the very best that we can. And in so doing, a subset of that priority is to make sure that we are reaching out to make, again, our workforce as diverse as possible and to increase the number of underrepresented minorities and women who are in leadership positions at Johns Hopkins Medicine. We're absolutely committed to that. I wanted to welcome you on behalf of not only uh, my office, but also Dean Rothman, who is traveling to China, who could not be here. He would otherwise be here. Uh, our doors are open. We're here to serve. We'd like you to feel very comfortable with the notion that if you ever have a, a major problem that needs to be addressed, there are many of us uh, in the dean's office and in the, uh, the president's office of the hospital health system who are willing to, to help. We're available by email, by phone. Door is open. So welcome, enjoy the evening, and please take uh, the good doctor's advice here. Do get to know someone that you haven't met before you walk into this room. Networking is important, and that's one of the reasons uh, we do this event. I wish you the very best, whether you're here as a medical student, whether you're here as a, a trainee, a, a graduate student, or in fact, we have a few a new faculty as well. Welcome all, thank you. Our Vice Dean, he's so modest, he never wants to come up. Please come, Roy. Roy Zinderstein is relatively new Vice Dean for uh, Education, but he has also supported this event. In fact, we combine uh, our events, uh, and Roy will bring a welcome. But let me tell you, he's a great guy, and he supports the cause. He does not want to let Johnny come lately. Anti-Ferguson type people. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Roy Zegelstein. Thank you, Lord. So, uh, thank you, Levi. I, I'm going to keep my comments very short. I'm going to say three things. Um, Levi mentioned a moment ago that uh, once upon a time, he and Roland Smoot were the only faculty of color here. 
uh, at this event. Um, <clears throat> I knew Roland Smoot quite well, and he was an amazing human being and physician. Uh, I know Levi very well, and he's an amazing and wonderful human being and physician. And the fact that even though those two great men were great, the fact that they were only two is to me embarrassing. Now, when I look around, that embarrassment is matched today by a sense of pride. When I look at all the future leaders and feel what Hopkins has been able to accomplish, I'm very proud, <clears throat> but I would hope that you would join me, Levi, and others in trying to make us even more proud in the coming generation. Point number one. Point number two. <clears throat> How many of you in the room are new to Hopkins? That's terrific. Fantastic. I hope that you sense warmth, not only in the room, but I hope that you've already sensed warmth here at Hopkins. I, when I came here in 1986, 28 years ago, if you're counting, um, I, I was told some things about Hopkins that made me wonder whether I was going to be greeted with warmth, and I was. But life was very different for me um, than it is for many of you. I'm delighted that we can have an event like this and hope that you really feel the warmth. I felt it so much that I was standing in the back there next to the fire alarm, and it was so warm. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Um, point number three, <clears throat> networking is really important. And I have gotten the chance to meet many of you tonight, and many of you I've met previously. But I want you to know that if during your time here at Hopkins, whether you're new to Hopkins or whether you've been here for many years, if there's something that I can personally do to help you, okay, please contact me. There's only one Siegelstein in the entire outlet at Hopkins. I'm very easy to find. Please contact me if there's anything that I can do to help you while you're here. That's sincere. R is equal to a JHMI. <laughs> and thank you and welcome. Thank you, Laura. I believe what he said, and that's one of the reasons he's here, and uh, the warmth I hope you feel. And, uh, and you know, I hope it will stay with you for the remainder of your life. That's what I'm suggesting will happen. Listen, so the city of Baltimore is happy that you're here, too. And I have a great friend, where is he? The president of the city council. Come up, Jack. Jack used to work at Hopkins. Give him a hand. He's here to welcome you on behalf of the city, among others. But go ahead, Jack. Thank you, thank you uh, Dr. Levi. I would, I would be remiss if I, is Councilman Mosby here? Yes. I thought he was here. Uh, Delegate Talbot's Branch, Hopkins is in this district. My colleague, Councilman Carl Stokes, and uh, Delegate Nat Oaks. Um, what can I say? I'm going to be very brief. Uh, Dr. Levi started this, um, and when he announced his retirement, I said, uh, Dr. Levi, who's going to pick up the mantle? And he told me he was going to continue. So I want to thank you. To those of you who are new to Hopkins, and those of you who are returning, welcome to the great city of Baltimore. You have to be coming during our 200th anniversary called Celebration. So there's going to be a lot of activities going on here in Baltimore. So go out there and take hold of all of Baltimore, uh, finest things that we have to offer. Again, welcome. Thank you, Jack. Hey, Delegate Oates is out there. He represents the state of Maryland. Come up and bring and welcome the kids. But this is part of the city and the state. Y'all ain't going to go to no medical school where all these people come and welcome you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be even briefer than the president, but I do. Uh, happy to see my uh, majority leader here at Talmadge Branch. Uh, well, majority, we actually have a black whip in the General Assembly. 
That's Thomas over there. But I want to welcome you all uh, to Baltimore on behalf of the state of Maryland. Uh, my president did a great job in letting me know all the eons that's going to go on in, in, in the city because of the 200th year. I just want to let you know that I would have been derelict and I would have got my butt kicked if I didn't show up for Dr. Wilder's event. And they talk all that nice stuff about Doc, Doc Rule with an iron fist. So I just want to let you know that if some of you did not show up and he knew it, he would address you. And I just want to welcome you all. Thank you for coming out. Uh, it's my honor now uh, to bring none other than the mayor of the city. Now, they talked about her. Y'all see her right there with that flag around her? She runs a hell of a city. But you know what? The National Magazine says she's one of the finest ladies we got. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Give a warm welcome to the mayor of the city. Yeah, I don't know why you have to embarrass me every time. All right. All right. I want to thank uh, Dr. Watkins for inviting me uh, here. I hope everyone is having a lovely evening. I saw that you were addressed. Uh, where did Council President go? There you go, the, the City Council President Jack Young and uh, Councilman Carl Stokes and uh, Delegate Oaks, always good to see you, and, and uh, Town of Branch, uh, Delegate Branch. You have a, a very well represented uh, cross-section of elected officials here this evening. And I want to, on behalf of the citizens of Baltimore, I want to welcome you, and, and I'm going to talk longer than Oaks, and maybe not as long as Council President, we shall see. You were quick? Well, I was only here for the second half. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one of the things I said that I know that we can relate to is uh, because you are here, we have something in common, that, uh, and that is a dedication to dedicating your lives to helping others. And I know that because of that, um, you've had already, they've already started? You already started? All right, so I know that you, no, I just want to make sure that, you know, I think that you've already lost some uh, good sleep hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> in the long week. Something that I can relate to, and I'm sure you understand that part, but you, you certainly made the right choice, and you have joined the, the uh, top medical institution, uh, the, Dr. Walker was bragging on me. I get to brag on Hopkins everywhere that I go. It is a, it is a world-class institution that is respected all over the world. And I hope you understand that. I hope you understand what an incredible institution is and in the, in the opportunity that you have. Um, I am, it's, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm looking at the next generation of global leaders. Why? Because the people who sat in those seats, your seats before you, are the global leaders of today. So that is, we expect nothing less uh, from each and every one of you. I, I grew up in a household, everybody in my family was math and science but me. My mom's a retired pediatrician, my dad was a mathematician, I, I went astray to law school. <laughs> and um, I, I know what it takes to get where you are. And I also know that you are on the cusp of such great opportunities to serve. And I was raised to, to use the talents and the skills that I was given and those that I could uh, develop through my education to use all of those things together to make my community better. And that's what you have an opportunity to do. So we're so much going on. I'm not gonna, they want me to tell you all the great stuff that we're doing in Baltimore. Y'all can read. When you're done, when you, when, when you get bored, just look on the website. Uh, I'm you all of this stuff that we're doing. The um, council president did talk about the 200th anniversary of our Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. I say, after you finish singing the anthem all over the, wherever we sing it all over the world, the last line should be, thank you, Baltimore, because of the, <laughs> the, the uh, men and women of different ages and races and backgrounds in Baltimore that after they burned down D.C., the British thought they were gonna come up here and do the same thing, we sent them packing. 
And because of that, not only do we not speak with those British accents, <laughs> but we also uh, have the, the benefit of the, the national anthem. You know, that dawn's early life that we sing about, that's the dawn over Baltimore. You know, when they say, you know, oh, say, can you see that the flag, that, that was a flag over Baltimore. So I'm serious. Y'all add it next time. This is thank you, Baltimore. <laughs> and when you want to get excited about it, you're going to have a whole week's worth of activity. I hope you get a chance to see something. And when you see the planes flying low, don't, don't get crazy. It's the Blue Angels. They're coming. The Blue Angels are coming. I know it looks crazy. You'll see them. It scared the dickens out of me when I saw them the first time. But they're coming for two days. So you're going to see them in town. The biggest fireworks show that Baltimore has ever seen. The, uh, the tall ships and the gray halls and, and uh, 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 a, um, what do you call it, a promenade full of, of uh, crying women when the sailors leave. It's, it's going to be a <laughs> But it, it is going to be a good time uh, in, in Baltimore. And I hope, hope, hope that you get a little bit of break to enjoy uh, uh, this, this little bit of American history that, that happened.